What's really special about Sydney Festival is that we go from high arts, um, ballet, opera, contemporary theatre, contemporary dance, to broad entertainment. We love the Sydney Festival! Sydney Festival proudly wants to go into places that you've never seen before, and it gives us a perfect excuse to really celebrate Sydney in summer. Embracing family program and producing a lot of Australian work, those are really the new directions the festival's taking. And a good example of that is the Festival Village. It's this place where you can come together, where you can play, where you can hang out, where you can have a go at one of the most beautiful arts installations ever created, a bouncy castle in the form and shape of Stonehenge, but also the work by the amazing Argentinian artist Leandro Early. So there's a lot of family work across the whole festival. We're bringing um, amazing shows such as Otello the Remix, which is a hip-hop version of Otello, or um, Occam's Razor, a really beautiful aerial dance and circus performance. Both of them very much family pieces that you can take your teenage kids to. Now the backbone of any arts festival is of course trying to do unusual things, stuff that you wouldn't normally see in a season and an important part of that is bringing unusual or special international acts. And like every Sydney festival, we've got a couple of really exciting ones coming up, including Dido and Aeneas, the spectacular um, Purcell dance opera. La Voix Humaine, the amazing theatre performance by Helena Rhine, based on a text and a film by Jean Cocteau from the 20s, and it's spine chilling when you watch it. But we try and strive for a balance between those works and also upping the ante with local companies and giving them opportunities to do stuff that they wouldn't normally do in their season. For instance, what we're doing this year with The Serpent's Table, which is an idea that came from Griffin Theatre, where um, you investigate the actual cultural importance of food as a way of telling stories. You don't necessarily expect that in a theatre season, but you love a festival to bring those kind of things. About an hour really is um, a mini festival within the festival. It's sort of your pressure cooker of what a festival can do. You bring a number of shows together, you present them as a really condensed program over the course of a long weekend, and you know that you can actually see more than one show in any given day. We're bringing a beautiful dance work as part of about an hour called Good Ear, Good Ear, which is danced and choreographed by Dahlia Pilgrim from Broom. <laughs> Indigenous work has really become a centerpiece of the festival and we really um, try and embrace Aboriginal work and we're bringing Black Diggers, the story of Indigenous soldiers in World War I. We've been tapping into what it means to be an Aboriginal man now and what it must have meant then when you were told you couldn't marry or couldn't earn money or couldn't own land or you couldn't travel from town to town. If these stories don't get out there, how will we actually be able to move forward? If we don't have this history, how can we have a future? Another important Indigenous work that we've brought to the festival is a collaboration between all the Australian festivals. It's a beautiful Indigenous King Lear, written jointly by Michael Cantor and Tommy Lewis. And when we are born, we have cried and we have come to this great stage of food. What's really important for us with these kind of works is that we really make them for every visitor and every Sydney cider. And we try and make it a mix of people that have been in the festival before and people you've probably never heard of. And I think it's this beautiful uh, sort of symbiosis between the city and the festival. You get this beautiful mix of people, you get this amazing crowd that is the Sydney Festival family.